yeah uh, today we have an eminent speaker uh, uh, dr n n k singh uh, sir and uh, they are focusing on the short term insulin use uh, i will introduce sir in short uh, sir is a diabetologist and physician at diabetes and heart research center dhanbad and sir is a chairperson uh, chairman of rssg as arkan uh, sir is ex governing body member of national api and uh, sir is also uh, ex chairman of api sarkand and uh, sir is having edited uh, million, millennium book of medicine and uh, there are more than th uh, over pub 30 publications uh, with the name of sir and sir is a man admin and founder of cme india uh, as well as sir is a editor uh, for the website www.diabetesdhrc.com uh, i welcome uh, dr nk singh sir uh for uh, on focusing uh, the topic of short term insulin use over to sir yeah <clears throat> thank you chairperson and uh, great thanks to manoj and dr purvi uh, i think you, uh, uh, no words yeah no words to praise you for a very exciting sessions which i am already tuned uh, since this has started uh, well uh, you have given a very very important clinical topic and that is a short term use of the insulin uh, i think uh, not in uh, many there were many conferences we have heard this but anyway i think uh, this will be a very clinical for most of us uh, let me just have the slides yeah good i think it is visible uh, no sir sir we can i think see your uh, email maybe you hello it is visible uh, sir, no sir no sir visible but we are able to see your uh, your uh, the, the email box not the slide set oh so okay okay just one minute yes sir i think uh, i just take this opportunity to thank dr nk singh sir for joining us uh, just let me share again ha huh? yes sir yes sir please no despite being unwell he's managed to be there on both the days 11th as well as 18th really appreciate that and he is a powerful resource uh, of knowledge and information as we all know in the country yes sir we can see it yeah i uh, thank you purvi <clears throat> so this is a very very important talk i will say that you have chosen and given me to uh, that is the short term insulin use uh, well insulin we have the great journey which uh, we are celebrating now a century since its discovery and uh, there is uh, nothing to tell that the the benefit of therapy in type 1 diabetes is insulin insulin and insulin uh, but many times available option for many patient with type 2 diabetes and in many situations where insulin becomes so important so our learning objectives will be uh, the very unique concept of short term therapy in many newly diagnosed cases and uh, now it is known as the stiit that is the short term intensive insulin therapy Uh, i think already we have lots of discussion on the gdm where again it is a short uh, term therapy uh, post covid again there will be a talk later on so i think i will not go much in that but uh, that is a also a very very important area uh, where we have using insulin in the steroid induced hyperglycemia so insulin use in perioperative is well known and very important and uh, in hospitalized patients in many conditions we use insulin so whenever when you get a high blood sugar at diagnosis suppose a newly detected diabetes has come to you and there is high blood glucose what you do so that is a very important discussion uh there is some new research also coming where this has been shown that if you use a short term intensive insulin in such cases the long term effect of intensive insulin treatment has been tested in several studies 
and had been shown to improve the beta cell function and restore early phase insulin secretion. And this is very, very important. So this is defined as, as insulin administration shortly for only a brief period of time is an alternative concept and aiming to entirely revise the perspective of diabetes management. So in even in a type two patients where if you see that there is early introduction of insulin might be needed or rather needed, if there is a evidence of ongoing catabolism, this whole much of the weight loss, symptoms of hyperglycemia are present. And basically the HB1AC more than 10% or blood glucose levels, something around 300, these are very, very high. So in such conditions, although uh, in most of cases, our practice is not to start insulin even in such a scenario, and there are so many factors, that is not the science, but that is the patient factors, insulin fear factors, and many factors. But the standard of care says that it should be started. So this uh, sick treatment, is recommended even for now the treatment of newly diagnosed type 2 patients to eliminate the glucotoxicity, to reduce the beta cell overload, and to support the residual beta cells and to enhance the insulin sensitivity. So this is very, very important. Uh, you can see that the short-term insulin therapy can successfully lay foundation for prolonged glycemic control. And what happens here? The pancreatic alpha cell dysfunction may contribute to the metabolic dysfunction found in diabetic states. So remember, this is we're talking about the alpha cell dysfunction. And because postprandial paradoxical hyperglucagonemia leads to the elevation of blood glucose levels. So this SIT therapy may also improve this alpha cell physiology. And indeed, it is possible that a stepwise addition of insulin leads to the reduction of this hyperglucogenemia. So this is very, very important concept coming. What could be the pros and cons? Like uh, if you see in such scenario evidence from the clinical studies, uh, they achieve and sustain prolonged remission. It has been shown in many studies that you have given a seed therapy for a short period and you get a prolonged remission. And there could be potential mechanism like the de-differentiation of beta cells Redifferentiate to mature beta cells after insulin therapy, and there we have got evidence also. And when there is lower baseline fasting glucose, higher BMI, better early phase insulin secretion, lower exogenous insulin requirements, shorter duration of diabetes, such patients really are do very much better. And this also there is significant improvement in the quality of life. And so if you think about the cost. There, when there will be an improved beta cell function that could result in better long-term glycemic control and health. So uh, uh, my urge is that in, su in specific such situations, think about the seat. Uh, because this is also now the ADA recommendations that initial therapy has the advantage of being effective where other agents are not at should be considered as a part of any combination regime. So when the hyperglycemia is severe, I told, the catabolic features are there, weight loss, TG is so much high, there is ketosis are present, then definitely you go for the insulin. So this is also a very important thing. So I think that my first part is this, that uh, there are lots of benefits of it. And the short-term intensive insulin therapy uh, appears to me a very good option for at least some patients in the type 2 diagnosis, uh, type 2 diabetes cases. And although there are many predictors where they will respond to the short-term intensive therapy, uh, I am just showing here this, what are the predictors, uh, but you can still see here that this is a very, very uh, nice concept and uh, with, filled with science. The second part is that the management of the hyperglycemia in hospitalized patients is a short-term affair, definitely. And you, there are lots of complications, comorbidities, uh, well, patients could be in the new diagnosis or diabetes and pregnancy or acute diabetic emergencies, like some complications, some device related problems is coming or general diabetes management or admission unrelated to diabetes like surgery. So type two patients in such conditions, only insulin you have to give. 
and there is a way how you start that hospital management of diabetes uh, can shorten here if you start insulin the hospital stay reduce the need of readmission improve the patient outcome remember i think this is a busy slide but anyway this is how the non critical ill patients we treat and the critically ill patients uh, when they are hospitalized and i'm not going to saying you all the details uh, but basically the uh, their regimes are like the consider low dose basal insulin or oad each when there is mild that is known as less than blood glucose 200 or if there is moderate they say uh, this is from the lancet diabetes and endo that the moderate hyper is 201 to 300 and basal insulin with or without correction or if there is severe then they definitely you go for the basal bolus uh, there is no choice so this is how this is summarized that uh, anti hyperglycemic insulin recommended critically go for iv uh, but non critically you can go for the sc insulin and uh, you know the targets for starting insulin i told and the target of suppose uh, 110 to 140 may be appropriate for selected patients and if this can be achieved without significant hypo uh, but higher glucose ranges may be sometimes acceptable in terminally if the patient is terminally ill, there is severe comorbidity, or when the close nursing supervision is not feasible. So you see here, but what about the sliding scale insulin? This is, a, I think, very exciting concept. But these days, in anti hyperglycemic treatment in hospitalized patients, non ICU, the sliding a scale insulin is strongly discouraged. You can see uh, we have the trials like rabbit 2 trial, uh, where you can show you that uh, if they were compared with the uh, this uh, SSI, that is the sliding a scale insulin. And here you can see where the blood glucose target of less than 140 was achieved in the 66% of patient with the glargine and glycine group. And only in 38% if you are going for this SSI group. So this clearly shows uh, that uh, sliding a scale, we are not getting the desired things. You can see here, it is much better here with the basal bolus and not with the sliding a scale insulin. Even you can see that the glycemic control rapidly improved after switching to the basal bolus. You can see here, so here the message is, that the basal bolus insulin regime is preferred over the sliding scale insulin in the management of non-critically ill hospitalized patient with type 2 diabetes. Uh, you don't, because if you give this uh, sliding, you can see here, there is, uh, you have a scale, you know the insulin level, sorry, blood sugar level, and according to the scale, you give the insulin, then there be, could be a roller coaster effect of insulin and lots of variability problem you can see here. So I think uh, this is, should be quite clear. And then definitely in most of the situations, we go for the basal bolus and the correction. So this is, this is how it looks like and how we uh, give this basal bolus uh, in insulin nap patients. Uh, I think the dose should be remembered. The total daily insulin dose, 0.3 to 0.5 units per kg and uh, you have calculate the total requiring dose and then half of the total daily insulin dose is allocated to basal bolus dosing that is one to two times daily another half to rapid acting insulin derived three times daily before meals so this is quite simple and definitely i showed you the superiority over the ssi so not going here details at uh, this source the how to calculate and what are the doses that is available everywhere. And remember also that for the short term, you may need the insulin infusion in at least uh, uncontrolled diabetic, uh, stress infections, uh, cardiac surgery, transplant surgery, liver and delivery time, high dose steroids and requiring destroyed content infusion. So certain conditions, uh, apart from all those basal bolus and SLI scaling, uh, you have to a uh, straightforward go for the insulin infusion technique. Now, we have, after the COVID and now again it is going on, this insulin use in a steroid induced hyperglycemia uh, is very, very important discussion. Uh, Dr. Suyas will tell you more details, uh, but definitely 
uh, in such situations, although many cases I have seen, they have used with the OHA, uh, but there are benefits of insulin for the short term, definitely in such cases. Uh, there is immediate onset of action, the easy titration, unlimited efficacy, greater flexibility and predictability, and rapid ability to target postprandial hyperglycemia, and dose can be modified related to patient oral intake. So definitely, this becomes a very attractive choice. You can give basal bolus insulin or basal analog insulin or multiple daily injection regimes according to the whatever the situation is, what type of steroid you are using. But remember that the insulin dose must be adjusted every two to three days with increase or decrease around 20%. And insulin dose should also be adjusted based on the changes in a steroid dose to prevent hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia and percentage of insulin adjustment corresponds to half of the percent in the steroid changes. For example, if the steroid dose is reduced or increased by 50%, the insulin dose will be reduced or increased by 25%. So this is how we uh, think about that. So definitely this is a very, very important issue these days. And uh, what uh, general recommendations for the steroid induced hyperglycemia you are saying here. Uh, so this is all that is uh, endorsed by ADA also, uh, but just I will say here that to control the fasting plasma glucose, use a basal insulin like glargin or NPH, and glargin works for 24 hours, dose either in the morning or at night, and taken at the same time daily, but the, remember the NPH, which is a very attractive choice, works for about 12 hours, and dosed twice a day if 24-hour coverage is required, or if the patient has a morning steroid dose, with rising glucose is basically post lunch, NPH can be given in the morning peak of NPH to coincide with the rise in blood glucose levels. So if the patient shows hyperglycemia both during the fasting and after all the three meals, then basal bolus insulin therapy is indicated and glargin is given once a day to control the fasting plasma glucose and the rapid acting insulin given at the meal time to cover most of the postprandial spikes I think this uh, slide is very important and this tells you everything, how to choose about the short curves insulin and which insulin. And that I will not go for calculating the TDD. Monitoring is very important. And so advice even after in such cases, I should be quite clear for the such cases. So I will lastly tell here that the steroid induced hyperglycemia, insulin is the therapy of choice and long-acting basal insulin and basal plus insulin regime is the effective clinically proven option for achieving optimal glycemic control along with fewer hypoglycemic events. And this point last three, I think this is the insulin use in perioperative management of hyper is very, very important issue. And uh, the preoperative assessment is very important, you know. And uh, once the surgical candidates begin to fast prior to their surgery, it is essential to stop the prandial mealtime insulin and continue only their basal insulin therapy. So this is a preoperative management. And alternately, all subcutaneous insulins may be discontinued and substituted instead with IV insulin infusion in order to have a more real-time glycemic management. And patient with blood glucose concentration greater than 180 while awaiting elective surgery, should receive a continuous IV infusion to maintain their glucose concentrations before 150. Although we, they are showing you the, about the IV, but I don't think practically we are following it or not because in most of cases, uh, many other ways are there uh, clinically, which we do. But anyway, the intraoperative management, the target perioperative blood glucose level depends upon the duration of surgery, invasiveness of surgical procedures, type of anesthetic techniques, and expected time to resume oral intake and routine anti-diabetic therapy. So when subcutaneous insulin is used in the preoperative period or operative room to treat hyperglycemia, blood glucose testing should occur at least every two hours. And uh, this is how I'm saying you about the here it is insulin is very, very important. Uh, now the CGMS can be instituted for better monitoring if possible. And this slide is again important. I think I will take one or two minutes more that there is emergency surgery, a certain timing and amount of the last basal prandial dose of insulin and oral hypo and check blood glucose preoperatively treat per recommendations below. And if 
as I told you, start continuous 5G insulin infusion. And for the elective surgery, follow the preoperative oral hypo and insulin guidelines for day before the day of surgery. Then check the blood glucose in preoperative area, treat per recommendations below. And if it is critically ill or duration here, you can see of operation time in more than four hours, then yes, go for continuous or there is no subcutaneous insulin dosing can be given. Even for the, the post-operative management is a short-term insulin again. If a patient is motivated to a non-critical setting, then a basal bolus or a basal plus is recommended. That. And the reducing the total dose by 20 to 25 gives you the starting in patient dose of basal insulin by the percentage and PO. So reduction in basal insulin reduces the risk of hypo, particularly in those with the poor or uncertain calorie intake. So you can see how we do with the minor surgery and the major surgery and avoid hypoglycemia. So the message here is that it is essential to start insulin therapy for patients getting admitted for surgery with persistent hyperglycemia with basal bolus regime or IV infusion and pre, intra and post-operative hyperglycemic management is crucial for patients undergoing surgery, both elective and emergency. Last part is the role of optimum post-meal glucose control in improving the GDM outcomes as already lots of discussion uh, has been done. So I'm not going details for how you start insulin in GDM. Everyone, I think uh, if you have heard our great speakers, the dosing is quite clear, insulin dosing in pregnancy, in first trimester, second and third trimester, and choice of insulin has been also discussed very well. And it is always preferred to start with the prandial insulin or starting dose. I am showing you the four units can be used for prandial insulin. Or if the fasting is more than 110, it is preferable to use a basal intermediate acting insulin at bedtime. And premix is less desirable due to limitations in titration. So I think insulin, uh, these things that do not cross placenta already discussed for the intrapartum management. And uh, if you think about the fast acting clinical part versus insulin as part, uh, you see that the insulin as part is a one uh, insulin which uh, gives us uh, or we have used extensively uh, in the such sir, cases of uh, JDM. It's time, sir. It's yeah, time, so sir. I'm just last slide. It is a progressive disease. Short term insulin therapy might be beneficial in some patients, such as newly diagnosed with very high blood glucose levels. And basal bolus insulin therapy represents the treatment of choice and short-term intensive insulin therapy is very, very important discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, so just I will end here uh, sharing. Thank you very much.